Hi, I'm Walt. Amateur call sign K4 OGO. I've been in uh, Kauai for a couple weeks, and uh, with me, I brought a lot of uh, radio gear. Uh, and I've done quite a bit of DXing, medium wave AM broadcast DXing. Um, I enjoy that. I've been a DXer since I was 10 years old and got a uh, Panasonic transistor radio uh, for my birthday. And I used to lay in bed at night and listen to uh, really cool stations and see how far I could uh, bring in uh, in my hometown of uh, Portsmouth, Virginia. On this trip, what I did was in the evenings, uh, I, at the Gray Line time, I basically concentrated on the continental United States and North America. And then I would wake up in the morning before dawn and try to see what I could get the other way at the Gray Line uh, around the South Pacific, uh, Pacific, and the islands and what have you. Made some pretty good uh, uh, logs and uh, had a good time with it. This isn't going to be a uh, band scan video of all those logs, just some of the highlights and uh, some of the things I really enjoyed. So um, stick around and check it out. I hope you enjoy it. In the afternoon, at dusk, I would go down to the beach and concentrate my efforts towards North America with the PL360 Texan receiver and the Texan AN200 loop antenna. Honestly, this is where this duo performed best. I logged several of the 50,000 watt clear channel AM stations from North America on the West Coast, including 640 KFI Los Angeles, 1070 KNX Los Angeles, 1530 KFBK Sacramento, and 730 CHMJ Vancouver. Anna, Anna, good news there. Five northbound, right of Main Street. That earlier incident has cleared. KFI and the sky update there faster. I'm Jimmy Harmon. One more day to next. All the top of score master. It's 9.15. On KNX, we have traffic and weather together every 10 minutes on the fire. So let's check in now with Tim Greenwood. Trouble into downtown, 10 westbound at Soto Street now. It is uh, two cars collided. At in the evenings, I would also sit out on the balcony of my hotel room and do some more DXing with the U-Loop antenna and the Texan receiver, as well as my amateur Zygu X5105 transceiver that I would use as a receiver. One interesting thing that I found there was at 1010 kilohertz, I picked up a Spanish station, which I couldn't determine if it was XEHL in Mexico at 5,000 uh, watts, or if it was the flamethrowing CMBX in Cuba at 500 kilowatts, which I could receive in Florida when I lived there with my toaster almost. That station gets out everywhere. Interesting. Take a listen and uh, tell me what do you think. Is this uh, one or the other? If you can tell by the station ID, uh, leave your comments and let me know what you think this station is. In the mornings, I would head down to the beach and concentrate my DXing on the Pacific. I got some pretty interesting things in the log, including 1098 kilohertz, which was Radio Marshall's V7AB in the Marshall Islands, and then 1017 kilohertz, which got me A3Z in Tonga, on the island of Tonga, and then I could rotate the antenna, and at times, even that station would be overwhelmed by JOLB, which is an NHK2 station out of Japan, out of Fukuoka, Japan. Take a listen, and uh, you'll see that this is a, uh, I believe I had just rotated the uh, antenna and picked this up. <laughs> One of the most exciting experiences I had while I was there was logging 657 kilohertz star 
in Wellington, New Zealand. This by far was the longest DX I've ever done on medium wave in my life at over 4,676 miles. I confirmed the station through the internet by also going online and hearing the station online at the same time. What a great experience. I had one day off while I was there, and I took out my little SDR receiver and hooked it up during the middle of the day and kind of scanned around to see what I could get. I could pretty much pick up all the locals in Honolulu pretty well. And there was one station local there in Kauai, 570 kilohertz, which just kind of exemplified the spirit of what AM radio is all about. I wish all stations were still like this. Plumber number one here on KUAI from John. And as I mentioned a couple of times here, I want to mention it again, um, because it's so important for this um, gentleman here in the uh, in, uh, in, uh, south side in Pui Pu. Uh, someone uh, stole his um, two bonsai, uh, bonsai uh, trees. Uh, the, uh, his bonsai trees were stolen last um, Thursday night, this past uh, Thursday night. It happened uh, between midnight and 6 in the morning. Uh, one of the wit- uh, there, there was a witness that saw a suspicious car. I was working on the west side of the island on the base, a military base, and one of the cool things located there was something I had heard my entire life and finally got the chance to actually see. That was Time Station WWVH. If you've ever listened to Time Station, then if you're a shortwave listener, you have had to have heard either WWV, CHU Canada, or WWVH here in Hawaii. I fortunately got to check it out, and it was a thrill. At the tone, 0 hours, 29 minutes, coordinated universal time. <phone rings> National Institute of Standards and Technology time. This is radio station WWVH Kauai, Hawaii. Broadcasting on internationally allocated standard carrier frequencies of 2.5, 5, 10 and 15 megahertz. I'm also a ham radio operator, so I got to do some pretty cool stuff while I was there, including some QRP on the beach and some VHF 2 meter handheld ops with the local hams on a net one night. CQ, 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 Kilo 4, Oscar, Golf, Oscar, slash KH6, portable QRP in Hawaii, calling CQ, CQ, anyone, anyone. Kilo 4, Oscar, Golf, Oscar, slash KH6, calling CQ, CQ, portable QRB. All right, uh, Brian was in and out, so let's hear from Walter. Kilo 4, Oscar, Golf, Oscar, go ahead. Well, packing all that up at the end of the trip was uh, quite a task, but I had a great time, took a lot of stuff. I took everything from my medium wave stuff, uh, my ham radio stuff, and uh, a lot of antennas, a lot of things to play with. Learned a lot of lessons. I know next time I'll simplify and just pack a few certain things that I know I'll need and not so much. Maybe even turn each trip into just a uh, either just a medium wave trip or just a ham ops trip because I should be traveling back there quite a few times for work. Anyway, had a blast. And here it all is, ready to get packed up and ready to go home. Well, that was a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I really had a great time here. I le- learned some lessons. Uh, one thing, if I uh, come back, which I probably will, uh, work calls for me. I do a lot of traveling and go to a lot of coastal destinations and, and pack stuff with me. Um, the antenna was good. It was okay. Um, if I could come back, I would probably uh, fabricate something or get something kind of like a Gary DeBox uh, FSL antenna or something decent like that. Um, I'm not saying the uh, the little uh, Texan AN200 is not decent, but uh, you know it, it's it's good for playing around. To get some serious uh, receptions in a place like this, you need a really good antenna. But uh, I had fun. I had a blast. It was awesome. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Hey, uh, subscribe, ring the bell, all the good stuff. You know what all the YouTubers say. Please do that. And uh, and I have other videos. I also have. Uh, Uh, some ham radio videos I shot here. If you're an amateur, you might enjoy those as well. Anyway, thanks and uh, thanks for tuning in. Aloha.